Hey friends, it's April here. And today I am going to be talking about sweeps. Okay, what is a sweep? A sweep is a backdrop that is not only a backdrop, but it's also the floor. I know, right? Crazy. I am going to be showing you guys how I shoot them. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to hang it on a backdrop stand, how to hang it on a wall, some tips and tricks with that. I'm also gonna show you how I shoot it. Then I'm gonna actually go into Photoshop and show you some tips and tricks that I have to edit sweeps in Photoshop. So I'm excited, let's get started. All right, so this is a sweep that I photographed Landry on this morning. Um, this is an eight by 14 sweep. So you can see the size scale difference on the wall up here. So the previous backdrop that I shot her on was an eight by 10. So it's 10 feet wide by eight feet tall. So you can see the size difference in the sweep. Um, I have it hung just a little bit lower because Landry is three. And so if she was older, I would have hung it a little bit taller because um, she's shorter and so I can do it without getting my ladder out. So this sweep is an eight foot. So the width is eight foot by 14 feet long. So when we say sweep, what we mean is that the backdrop goes on the, on the wall or backdrop stand, and then it sweeps down onto the floor. So when you shoot it, this backdrop is a floor and a backdrop all in one, which is super awesome. Um, especially if you don't have a lot of floors. I only have actually two mat floors and then I use my studio floor. So I only really shoot with three different floors. I have my studio floor, which I consider a medium tone. I have heirloom calm, which I consider my light and then archer, which I consider my dark. So I like to keep it simple. Then I have other fleeced uh, drops that I will put on top of my mat floors. So the way I, so even if it's on a backdrop, it doesn't matter, backdrop, uh, stand, or the wall. I hang mine on the wall, but if it was on a backdrop stand, it's gonna look the same as it does here. It's just gonna be against the wall, or away from the wall. So what I do is I stretch it out. I put my rubber backed mat. So it basically is a mat that has rubber on the back, as you can see. Um, it's kind of like a, um, almost like a fleece kind of material. And so I stretch it out on here and then I tape it down. And what I tape it down with is external painter's tape. Now, this is for example, my tape where I show them where to stand. You do not want to keep this tape on there. You can see I've had this on there for a few hours and you don't want to keep that tape on there because it will mess up your material. So the way I keep mine down, and now this is wrinkled because I don't have it completely taped down, but if I had it all taped down, it wouldn't be wrinkled like this at all. So I stretch it and tape it at least three pieces right here, three right here, and three on the other side. The reason I use tape, some people might use, you know, um, clamps or whatever. I don't want my kids stepping on my clamps and hurting their toes. I don't want the littles, it being a choking hazard. I don't want anyone tripping over it. When little kids are right here and there's something in the floor, for some reason they're automatically drawn to it. And I don't want that to happen. So I use tape. I might even let the kids help me with the tape. Um, I also, so when I remove this piece of tape, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it. I always put it on my ladder. As you can see, I have other tape on here too, because when I'm putting another one down, which I didn't choose a good one, that one's all messed up. They're all messed up actually. I can just take it back off and tape it back down. I haven't used this tape in a long time, so they're like taped together. But that is like a quick way that I reuse my tape. Um, I can show you. Let me grab it. Looks like this. And it's just, I think that this one's external painter's tape. You can use gaffer's tape. But I just feel like it's the best way to um, put the sweeps down. So there's that. 
All right, let's talk just a little bit about backdrop stands. Um, I've had a lot of backdrop stands over the years. Um, a lot. <laughs> For example, my Manfrotto um, tripod is, drum roll please, 20 years old, literally, and it's still kicking. So my all time, I've always, always, always only used telescopic backdrop stands. So what that means is, do you see how it comes in like a tension rod? So that's the best way I can describe it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for you guys real quick and try to show you what I'm talking about. So it pushes into itself. So to make it longer, I can just pull this out. To make it shorter, I push it in. So why, who cares, okay? Well, I care because these backdrops are heavy, okay? And the telescopic poles are supported by itself. So this part is in here, this part is in here. So they're extremely sturdy. So I'm like pulling down on it. So, you know, sometimes you can get a backdrop stand where this pole connects to this pole and it sags. Well, there's nothing to support it. So this pole supports itself just like a telescope. So I think they're awesome. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we hang the sweeps or pretty much any backdrop. So if you have a fleece um, backdrop, there's no rod pocket. And a rod pocket is where it is sewn so that your rod slips in. Premium backdrops do have a rod pocket. So if that's um, important to you, then go ahead and buy premium. So it's super easy to hang these, okay? These clamps are just from my literal local hardware store. I mean like a tiny little, I'm in a town of like 2,500 and we have them here. So what you do is you just take your backdrop, fold it over your rod, and then all you do is clamp it. Go a little bit further. Clamp it. And then you continue on down the line, making it tight, okay? I would say at least six clamps for the top. Um, these are like a medium size. I can post a link below. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp that. So now once I have it clamped, I'm just gonna start raising it up. Um, if you have an assistant, that's awesome, good for you. I'm jealous, I don't. Um, sometimes I can have mom and dad help me. But the reason I hang mine and then go up, after I trip on it, quit tripping April, <laughs> is because this tells me how high I need to go based on the height of my subject. So if it's a little kid, you can see there's still some flowers on the ground, so I'm gonna go ahead and go up a little bit more. Actually, you can't see that, can you, I like. So I'm gonna go up a little bit more. Until it's level, okay? That looks about right. So I am completely crooked. So I need to go up on this side a little bit more, but I'm trying to go up where the bottom of the flowers are level. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll get back. Okay. So I think sometimes hanging a sweep is easier than hanging a backdrop because the tension of it going on the floor pulls the wrinkles out. Okay, but you do want it tight. So Amazon has these really cool bungees that have clamps on both sides. And they look like this. Okay, so they have Velcro and then a clamp. So what you do is you undo the Velcro this part, so the Velcro part goes 
on the backdrop stand and then the bungee holds the backdrop tight. I'll show you. Okay, so all you do, super easy, is you put the Velcro around the backdrop stand. Like so. Then you clamp the side of your back. Now this one just happens to be the right distance away. If it's not, all you do is either release the bungee or pull the bungee tight. Okay, so then you're gonna go on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so this side is a little bit closer to the backdrop stand. As you can see, sometimes these get tangled up. So you release this. I try to make it kind of like equal distance to the other one. And what I'm gonna do is pull it tight. Now, this one, you can, you can always go like this and like fold it in and clamp it and it holds it tight. And this is, this is important. Sorry, what I was saying was this is important, especially if you have a fan going so that it's not blowing your sweep. So as you can see with these side clamps, it's very, it's very tight like very tight. And so then what you would do is put another clamp. Do you see the wrinkles? I'm going to show you. I'm going to do this clamp. Hold on. So you can see the difference in I have it clamped now, whereas when I let go of it, you can see those wrinkles right there. Okay. But whenever it's clamped, it pulls it tight and gets rid of those wrinkles. Now, so I'm not going to clamp it. Let's pretend like it's still clamped. And then what you do is tape it down. Hold on, I'll go ahead and, <laughs> can you see it? And then if you want to tighten it, you just pull that bungee and it tightens it. You see, now it's like perfect, literally. See, that's what I love about sweeps is it's just, it's, it's, it's um, infinite, the look of it. See? And then what I would do is I would just sit here and I would smooth it out and then tape it. And when you tape it, it just looks so nice and it's flat, no one's tripping over anything and it just looks perfect. So this is an eight by 14, so it's eight foot wide by 14 foot long. If it's a larger sweep, you do it exactly the same way. If it's premium, you do it the same way, except you have a rod pocket at the top. It is so easy, so quick, and so simple. And you can see how beautiful this is. Now, this is with a backdrop holder. The first one was just on a wall with stick pins. Um, people that, if you have a magnet wall, it would be hung exactly the same. So you can see how easy it is and how beautiful it is to hang these. And everyone has a different way of doing things. So this is just me showing you guys how I do it. You're gonna take it, you're gonna buy your sweeps, and you're gonna figure out your own way, which is awesome. That's what I love most about photography, as a matter of fact. So. Get your sweep, try it out, you will love it, I promise. Floor, backdrop, all in one, super easy. Now I'm gonna show you how I store them and about how much space they're gonna take up. Okay, in my studio, there's my some of my dresses, but in my studio, my backdrops, I fold and put on shelves. So it's kind of messy in this area right now, but we're just gonna go with it. So the, my sweeps I keep over here on a separate shelf and this shelf is from Lowe's and it is two foot by four foot. So this whole shelf right here is four foot wide. I have my sweeps folded and there are around 25 sweeps just right here. If that gives you any idea of the space that you would need if they were folded. Now, I've, like I said, I've got about 12 drops in each stack and there's two stacks. I'm gonna try to measure this for you because I know you guys are gonna ask. And so it's just over two foot tall. So about 10 drops would be about two feet tall if that gives you 
any idea to stick pin in that. Um, and this is four foot wide. So you can fit about 25 and I have room to stack more on top. Um, and so this kind of gives you, this is four foot wide by, I think it was what, 10 foot tall or 10. <laughs> I was right, two foot tall. So two feet tall by four feet tall will store uh, folded about 25 backdrops or sweeps. I'm sorry, eight by 14 sweeps. Cause that's what I have here. So that hopefully gives you a little bit of idea of storage. This is going to be a complete, I have never edited this image. So as you can see, I shot this on an eight by 14 sweep. Um, I shot this with a 35 millimeter, so it's very wide angle. And we're going to edit this image. Okay, um, I'm gonna start with, actually, I'm gonna use the patch tool and I'm gonna get rid of some of these uh, footsteps and wrinkles. Um, one tip that I do have when you're getting rid of these wrinkles and you're using the patch tool, never go up or down and I'm going to show you why. Whatever is closer to you is probably going to either be in focus or not in focus. So you can see on this plane of focus, it's much more in focus if that makes sense. If I come this way, then I am staying within the same plane of focus if that makes sense. So if I go like this, it's going to be looking like a dot, like that. If I stay right here, it's going to be the same amount of blurry. We'll say that. That's probably what everyone can understand. So as you go back, it's going to be in less focus and or blurrier. And then closer to you, it's going to be blurrier. And this, since I was shooting probably at 2.8, here's where my focus is going to be. So I always want to pull from the side. I never want to pull from up here or down here because then it will make it, it will not look right. It'll be either too blurry or too in focus compared to what you're trying to clone. And if that doesn't make sense to you right now, when you start doing this, it will. Okay. I'm good with that. I haven't done any facial retouching on her. I'm not going to focus on that right now. What we're going to focus on is dealing with extending this backdrop. Okay, so there are two ways we can do this. What I just did was I just lassoed that sucker on the left and I hit the delete key. It was not perfect. As you can see, that is not bad. You would need to clean this up just a little bit like this area, because you want it to kind of look like the backdrop is extending. That's not so bad, okay? Literally, all I did was I used the patch tool, I selected what I wanted gone, and I literally hit the delete key, made sure content aware was on, and went for it. So another thing that you can do is I can patch this area. So I can use this patch tool, and let's, you know what, let's go back. Do, do, do. Where was I? Let's go right here. Okay, so this is back where I was. Let's say I want to patch this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an area that's good. Okay, this is a good part of the backdrop. I'm going to hit Command J, which is going to, I'll show you, copy the selection that I just made, right? So then what I can do is I can just pull it right over. I'm holding down shift key and I'm just making it bigger and bigger until it's kind of filling up that space. I can hit OK. I can make a layer mask, which means in this area, I'm going to be able to take away or add to the selection. So I'm going to take away, so I want the color of my brush to be black instead of white. So I want to make sure that my brush is black over here. And then I'm just going to remove that until it looks right. And I'm going to flip it over and come in with that. I'm cool with that because I see this line here. But it's okay because I'm going to flatten my image. I'm going to use the patch tool. I'm going to go around that flower. And I'm going to drag it over. And I like that. Like, that's fine. 
Let's say I liked that. I'm good with that. And I need it to be over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to select the area over here. I'm going to hit Command J, which puts it on another layer and copies it. I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to go to Transform. And I'm going to go down here to Flip Horizontal. So what that did was it took that selection and it flipped it so that it would be the opposite. Okay, sometimes when people do this, it's awesome, right? It looks good, looks good. But you forget that over here was a little bit darker, see? So all I'm gonna do is with that layer selected, I'm going to hit Command L, which is going to bring up my layers. I'm going to choose this middle one, which is the shadows, and I'm going to bring it down until it kind of matches that over there, okay? Then I'm going to take this layer, I'm going to turn it, add a layer mask to it, which is going to let us be able to manipulate that layer. I'm going to choose a brush that is the opposite shade of that, which is black, because I want to take away. So. In my, the way I remember things is the bigger the brush, the softer it is. So you want to start off kind of softer. I'm going to turn mine to the other color because I'm going to add back to it. And I am actually making my um, brush larger and smaller with the um, bracket keys. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit lighter. That's okay. I can go over here, all right, to my layer. I can hit Command L again. You can move this if you need to see. And I can make it a little bit darker until it looks about right. I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to mess with this a little bit. This right in here. So here's where the layers meet, and I'm going to kind of brush that in. The plus is that this um, backdrop is beautiful and multidimensional, and I love that about it. And then I'm just going to go back and forth. I'm getting nitpicky right now, and I need to quit because I'm just really trying to show you guys how to do this. And I'm not, I don't hate that. See, you could even show you like that. See, so there are some places right in here that I'm going to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. I'm going to take my patch tool. And this actually, this darker area right here, I'm going to see if it'll blend it a little bit better. It did. I'm not crazy about that. Sometimes if you go way back, you can see better. Like there are some wrinkles right here that I don't mind, but I don't want it to look exactly like that either. Then there's this little area right here. And you, you know, you could fiddle with this, but I'm good with that. Because let's go back to the beginning. I mean, come on. <laughs> we came a long way, baby. All right. But yeah, that is how to extend the background on a sweep. And once you get going, you'll find your own way. Um, that's just a couple of ways that um, I, you know, do it. And it's, it's a lot easier than what you think. And I hope that I made it look simple for you um, to give you the courage to try it out. Okay guys, that wraps up the sweep video. If you've never used one before, I suggest you purchasing one. If you get it in and it's not for you, no big deal. Take it to Facebook Marketplace, resell it on a backdrop group and buy you a regular backdrop, okay? Sweeps are awesome. I hope that you learned something or had something to take away from this. As always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them below and I will do my best to answer them. So if you are also not a part of the Baby Dream Backdrop News group on Facebook, head over there and get in that group because it is daily inspiration, daily sales. It's amazing. So thanks for joining me again and we'll see you next time.